my friends welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris today we'll talk about quest properties which is a small file uh, that gives some technical and non-technical information about your game and it's quite important actually to um, fill this file um, properly uh, how do you open it first um, if I close this tab file quest properties or um, control P or you can also right click your root folder in the uh, tree here quest tree open properties um, yeah and you have a whole bunch of information about your quest so let's uh, try to understand what all of this is about there is some technical information to make your game run properly and some non-technical information that is more about um, in giving some information to to people about your game um, okay first um, so our version is 1.6 it's not uh, an editable field it just means that this, this quest was created with 1.6 and will be compatible with uh, that version of Solaris and uh, yeah this one is much more important write directory um, you can imagine that your the people who will play your game might have uh, multiple Solaris games installed on their computer and what you really don't want is that your save game files would clash with other games with uh, other quests so that's why everything your quest can write um, which is save game files but also some other files like settings or um, any file that your quest might uh, explicitly create from a Lua script all these files uh, will be written to that directory and when you create a new quest um, this field is initialized with a random unique ID to make sure that uh, no quest will clash with other quests and this directory uh, let's see where it is it is actually in uh, home directory slash dot solaris um, this is currently the case on any operating system so here I am on uh, Linux but uh, you should not really mind if you are on Windows you can also find uh, this dot solaris folder um, under your home directory and then you have a lot of sub subfolders, one for each quest. Um, so here, you as you can see, I'm a big Solaris user. Uh, that's not a surprise. But if I want to find my quest directory here, it's, it starts with uh, 93. 93, where it is? Here. And you can see that you have two files, save one dot dot and settings dot dot. Um, if you are curious, you can open it and see everything that was saved um, yeah it's just a text file settings are also, uh, something that I didn't mention so far but uh, maybe there will be a tutorial about it it's to save some built-in settings um, <clears throat> okay so that's what that was about write directory you can change it to something more readable What's important is that it's unique. Uh, Tito English, yeah, for example. Then quest title, summary, description, author, all of these things are not used at all by Solaris. Um, that's not really true. The quest title is the only thing that is used when the game, is, the game runs. <clears throat> it is used to display a title here. Um, by default, you can always change what is in the title bar in the in the title bar of your window. By the way, uh, by calling the function sol dot main dot set window title. Uh, as always, check the the Lua documentation to to see how to do to do so. But um, if you change your title here, my awesome quest. Yeah, by default, I see the title here. Okay, undo. Um, and the rest is not used when the game runs. 
but it is it might be used by the Solaris launcher. So here, this is Solaris launcher. Um, as a reminder, this is the UI that uh, most players might use to play Solaris games, and they might have multiple games installed on their computer. Um, oh, this is the French version of the launcher. Let's, let me run it again in English. That will be nicer for you. Okay, and I want to add the tutorial quest, which is here. Tuto quest. Okay, so I added the tutorial quest in my Solaris launcher. So just to show you what your player will see if they use Solaris launcher. Um, and they don't see much actually, <laughs> because we didn't fill any information. We only fill the, the title of the quest here, tutorial quest. But a real game might have a nice logo, a nice icon, and some meta information here, and maybe a long description. Um, so let's see how to, to do that. <clears throat> it's quite simple, you just have to fill out this form. Um, so there is a short description and a long description. Let's say, quest used to create official tutorials, official Solaris tutorial. So this is a short description with one line and a longer description with uh, possibly multiple lines. This quest to create some uh, video tutorials to uh, get to help people get familiar, something like that, with Solaris Quest creation. Um, blah blah blah. You can use multiple lines. This tutorial playlist. Uh, can be found on Christophe's YouTube channel uh, and so on and so on. It really doesn't matter here. You can put the author. You, you, are, you are allowed to pull multiple people here. Uh, whatever you, you write here will just be displayed in the Solaris launcher. You can put a quest version if you want a date, if it's already a release, or if you have a release date that is planned. And also, everything is optional, of course, but solarisgames.org, if you want to put a website. Okay, and that's that should be enough for now. So most of the, what I just uh, wrote here is displayed on the right part of the launcher here. Um, for Solaris 1.7, we are uh, completely rewriting a completely new launcher, but uh, whatever information you put here will be useful somehow. Um, okay. And now how to put a nice logo here and a nice icon here. So the, the icon that is displayed here is also the icon of your process when you play the game. So. It's quite nice to, to put a, a cool icon. Um, how to do that? It's not from the quest property files itself because this is just a um, simple text file, as I said, uh, quest.dat. But if you check the documentation of Solaris, in this part here, quest data file specification, you have a section called quest logos and icons. I recommend to check this and to follow uh, what they su what we suggest. Uh, if you want a logo, it should have this size and have that name. And if you want a cool icon for your process when running your game, um, use, use that. You can have multiple sizes uh, and they will be used uh, on because all operating system, every operating system has their own conventions for for icons. Um, 
just so you know, all of this will probably change um, significantly in the in 1.7 with the new launcher. So maybe there will be more uh, recommendation, more files to to create. Uh, we will see. So if you are from the future and you are watching this tutorial after the release of 1.7 and of the new launcher, maybe this documentation page will have changed. But just follow whatever they recommend. Um, but for the time being, let's try to create that logo folder that is uh, suggested here in 1.6 logos. And in there, I need to put all PNG files that are uh, suggested, but I will not create some PNGs uh, right now. I will just uh, steal some from another game, Zelda XD2, for example. You see, we have a lot of these. Import. I always recommend the import feature to uh, keep the author and license information. OK, I have all my logos now. So if I run the launcher again, this time the tutorial quest will look like it is <laughs> Zelda XD2, Mercury's Chess, and with this icon. This was really just for the example. I don't want to keep these uh, wrong logos in my uh, tutorial quest. But uh, yeah, I hope this was helpful. And now the last part of uh, quest properties is again more technical. Um, it's about the logical size of your of your game. So when you are running the game, the window size here is um, um, 640 by 40, uh, sorry, by uh, 480. And it's a pure coincidence that this particular map has this size. Because actually the quest size, which is the logical game area is smaller. It's uh, 320 by 240. But by default, the window is scaled by a factor of two, which is uh, exactly the same as the dimension of, of this map. But uh, that's a pure coincidence. <clears throat> Whenever you resize your window, my point is that the logical size um, is the only important one uh, for you as a game creator. It is whatever you put here. 320 by 240 by default. And you notice, of course, that when you make your window bigger, it will not add some, co some visible content of the map here. It will just uh, stretch the, the content. So what we call quest size, in Solaris is the base size before any rescaling. It's, by the way, also um, the quest size also exists before you create your quest, um, before you run your game, sorry. We saw the Solaris logo here. It also was in, uh, in, in, in this quest size. So what happens if we change it? We could make it bigger, for example, uh, let's do this again uh, 640 by 280 so m there are three fields here but most of the time for most games it, you, you want the same in all three fields I, I don't know a lot of games who, who would need uh, different quest sizes um, yeah, so now it looked completely dif different, right? <laughs> now my base base size is actually exactly the same as the, this map, which makes it fit perfectly in the window. Mm. Notice that again that the window is still twice the quest size by default. This can ob obviously be changed uh, from code with um, set w sol .main .set window size 
And fun fact, if you go to a map that has a smaller format than your uh, quest size, it still works, but it will be letterboxed here in the, um, in the black area. The HUD uh, is automatically adapted to any quest size, this particular HUD. But it's your responsibility as the HUD creator to take care of that. If you if you do your custom HUD, um, okay. So it's quite funny to to see the maps with uh, this larger uh, point of view. Um, yeah. Again, minimum and maximum quest size will most likely be the same as your normal quest size. Maybe there will be a future tutorial about uh, changing that, but I mean changing the minimum or, or maximum. But it's it's most of the time it's it's not you will not need it. It would mean that your game can run with a different um, quest size on different operating systems, for example. Uh, let's say you want your game to to have this ratio uh, in on computer, but but if you want to play your game on a handheld device um, that has a different ratio, then on the handheld device maybe the window uh, will have this we have a ratio like this, and it will introduce some black bars. So on that particular system. Maybe you want uh, Solaris to actually fill the the black bars with with more content, but then it, so yeah, just to mention that this is possible, but I don't recommend it, and it would mean that some players will see more content uh, than others on different systems. So probably that's that's not uh, a great recommendation. But I, I just wanted to mention that it, this is possible. Again, most of the time, just put the same thing in all three fields and you will be good. I hope this was understandable enough. If you have any question, uh, we are here on Discord to help you. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Bye.